Uh, hey there everyone, so so what this video is going to be is a more general build guide on this game. I've seen people having a lot of questions from the prior build guide that I did, mentioning things which were wrong. So that wasn't a generalized build guide on this game. That was me explaining the type of build that someone was asking for and how they could generally do it. As for this, I'm not going to go over the, the stats again, except we will be going more into the nitty gritty of what, like exactly how they actually work for the purpose of math and everything else. So for the actual main stats, please check the prior video, but skip the build section. And I'm just going to be going over a bit more of other info. So for the prior video, I'm pretty sure I said that Solo is the only head that I use, and for the most part, for non-PVP reasons, the solo head is fine. It's fast, the stats are there, but it does have things other ones don't. Like if you want max speed, the holo furnace is fine. Except though, the one stat that doesn't necessarily matter for most builds, but will matter for PVP, certain other setups, or missiles. Actually, let me just get rid of my... F let me just shrink this a bit. It doesn't matter if it's full screen. How do I get this? Um... Just so my face is not covering some of the stuff. Shake myself. There we go. It's fine. I was saying, so... A, so, something that does matter is the, sorry, is the camera functionality. Which, what this does, not sure how much I went over it before, is this actually augments and increases the lock-on range for your FCX. So, you're going to think for, for a lot of weapons... Why does it matter if I don't want to be that far? And the answer is missiles. It's very good for missiles and extending the missile range even when you're using like an in blue or a Judith because you're using rifles. You can still get a nice lock on using the 047N to get like a thousand plus range lock on using a like 790 range FCX. Now, for core, generally, you don't have to go too much over these stats. We kind of covered that. Now, for the purpose of these other stats here, like firing stability, aim precision, uh, maneuverability, now that's where it kind of comes into play. So first of all, the firing stability is for not losing lock-on from, from just recoil, like, or getting stunned from, like, uh, a, a, a bazooka weapon, uh, uh, a grenade, the Moto Cobra machine gun. You will note the Vonda, which I'm pretty sure I mentioned for the prior one, has so much recoil from its fire rate, completely not usable. Doesn't matter what you do, your lock on will turn off and it'll just stop tracking. Now, the the uh, maneuverability is something I didn't, I don't believe I covered too much, which is that is your arm's ability to keep tracking. And what that's also augmented by is how much recoil you're currently taking. The, the melee ability stat of the physical weapon. You'll see there's a melee ability, which, which I fairly believe is, a, is like an actual percent augment of the for of the stat on that arm like how energy um, um energy weapon skill is a percent damage modifier us like these deal 75 percent of the of the arm energy weapon or your arm blades damage and then the other part that highly affects it is also the weight of the item so the weight also directly impacts the stat a much heavier weapon, like let's say the, let's go with a bazooka for instance, like a 2500 weight uh, bazooka, even though the melee ability is high, still going to very noticeably impact the maneuverability for the arms to keep that, to like keep actually following the target. This isn't to lock on, this is for like following the target. You will note that like the heavier weapons, as I said, there is a white target that that'll follow them. That has to be on them before it starts to lock on. Which a second part of note is that a strong machine gun 
will flutter over them like the uh, like the motor cobra, which does affect the lock on a bit. If you're playing online, one of the few online tips that'll be in for in this video, if you are only locking on with your left arm, just your left arm, not left back, it will desync and basically never hit anything. So if you're using a high recoil weapon like a motor cobra or right back missiles, which will not be attempting to lock on while it's trying to reload, or while it's chain firing, your left arm is not going to work. So, so if you can, make sure your Motor Cobra, the high recoil, anything weapon that doesn't lock on is on your left side, because the right arm will still work. Missiles left back. Now, if you're using your left back, then it's fine. Like, if you have a machine gun arm, missiles on your right, a grenade cannon here, that's all fine. It's just the left arm. I'm not going to go too far into it, but even for the whole franchise, left arms are coded differently than everything else. When you're hex code editing the older games to mod them and stuff, the right, the okay, so like the right arm, right back, left back are all two, 2,610 hex code away. For some reason, the left arm is 56, some, 10 or 56 something. I'm not really sure why, but they, they just treat it differently and there's a, there's an issue, but again, that's only for online play. So for single player, it doesn't matter. Our legs, everything is normal here. Now, to go into what, so something that I was asked is exactly how does lock speed work? Because it's it just gives you an actual number. So to answer that for you, here is a calculator. So basically, it works on frames, but not exactly. So if you have a lock speed of 2000, of, sorry, of 272, so basically you're going to take the a base of 6,000, divide it by your lock speed, and this is how many frames it takes to lock on. It, this is a 60 frame game. So that's basically, it's going to take you, that was not what I needed to do. So it's going to take you about a bit more than a third of a second to lock on. Minus any other reloads or anything else you have to do. So for instance, the in blue starts at 400, the max tuning is 1000. So at that case, if you do it for that at 1000, it's six, which means that you that, that the in blue at max speed only takes a tenth of a second to lock on. Now you may think that for most cases, a third of a second or a tenth of a second, it's not really that different. And it's true. For a lot of cases, you will easily have a third of a second. When the in blue matters is like if you're constantly boosting around them or just anything like that and you just and you just want that quick snap to fire a a back grenade or something like like a sapla will lock on very quick, lightweight, hammer them. Really good for doing a joust, which is constantly going past them to hit them with something hard and keep going while your actual reload's happening. You can do that with missiles. You can do a lot of stuff with that. Now, this is just to show you how that lock speed works. And missiles also have an indicator when they're physically locked on, because if you just immediately fire when you have that red lock, you will notice the missiles will fly out, not track anything, and come back. The missiles actually get... Sorry. Okay, so for the actual, like, circle targeting spot, they will get these, like, little arrows for on the side. The right weapon will get a little right arrow. The left one will get a left arrow on the side of that. And just since we're here, and I'm not doing anything in any particular order, let's go, let's go load into a game. There's also something else I can show you while I'm here that's quite nice that I'm not sure if I showed for the for the other video. <clears throat> Though I should have probably sh so you'll see that there are the arrows here. These these arrows are actually telling you that these missiles have now locked on. Notice if I if I fire there, the right one is gone for a bit as it's actually firing because the missile is not locked on. Now, for the other thing that I don't believe that I actually went over, missiles can also multi-lock. So you'll see that when you've got a missile selected, there are like other other targets inside white. If you if you hold the lock button down, 
it will actually highlight them also showing that I'm locked with the left and not the right. The right is only locked here. And you can just let go and it'll just fly out and target the enemies for you. Again, PvP, not really needed. Honestly, for PvE, it's not needed. It's just a very nice touch. A lot more useful in a 4 when you have a lot of slow clustered enemies. But 4 answer, not really needed. And I accidentally went back to the test. My, my apologies. Now, as for generators, what I said last time was probably accurate, which uh, also, just to go over it again, so what the the other things are fine, the radar refresh rate is also how many frames between updates for the actual radar. Again, it is a 60 frame game, so at 75, it'll only update about every one and a quarter seconds. Most cases is not needed. If you're someone who's doing like really high speed blading, machine guns or something and jousting people, especially for online, that's nice to have it update often. And there are some FCSs like Blue XS in blue, which are close range, which is very nice to have the update at every third, sorry, every third of a second. And for the purpose of lock on acquisition, you can increase the radar refresh rate. Now, most things on this list will only increase by 10 by by 10% for all 50 points. It's 0.2 percent a point. Like load here. It's about it's about 1180 that I'm getting bonused here. That'll work for most of it. Here as well, about 10%. Now, lock speed can actually go up pretty high. And surprisingly, the ECM resistance, but mostly the radar refresh rate, if you're really someone who likes the radar for that point because you're being close, can be com can, that can completely change how you, how you actually play. Oh, also, for the purpose of stability for your legs, heavy cannons need a certain amount so you don't stun yourself. There is actually a specific number for every cannon, every grenade. I don't have a chart. You can play with it a bit where even just a certain amount of stability for your legs, or again for your arms for a larger bazooka, can be all all that you need to take a, a like weapon that isn't working well to really good. And then and then last but not least, as I said here, the parallel processing is about lock on degradation when firing two weapons at the same time. Now as far as I can tell, this is actually a base thousand. So this here at 750 means that you only have 75% of your lock-on ability for, for like really holding lock-on, keeping it all up, keeping all of that going. But something that really heavily alters this is if you have something like let's say rifles and you're currently using two. Also, this is really only for for like this is for like actual lock weapons things like a things like an actual missile will not affect the the lock ability for for something for your arm even if it's an arm missile so this is really that if you have let's say multiple um okay so multiple rifles if you alternate the fire besides this now not coming into play the recoil's different and all of that just works better. It's also harder to dodge because I can't just dodge, just time dodging for to dodge a single shot. So, so, so that helps out with that as well. Now for this, I'm pretty sure I probably said that the Alaya and the and then the uh, uh, Obrera are all you're really going to need. I mean, that's still pretty much true. There are people who may just for their certain builds because the Alaya uh, takes a lot of weight, have something in the middle that they may like to use instead. Like maybe they use the uh, uh, the, sorry, uh, the, the, the Regal generator because the output's fine, energy's fine, the KP is nice. The Hoguyer is also, I mean, I typically like the higher outputs as you will notice on regulation 1.4 the outputs really aren't that different so you can really kind of play like play with the weight for the older regulations like 1.2 the weights are also a lot lower of the higher end ones i think like this just completely kills the generator from ever even being used i don't know why they did it 
But yeah, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, La Iyer is good. The Sobrero is good. I try to stay around like 35,000 if I can. But I do know that most of them for the weight isn't going to get there. Which is why I say the uh, Lia works. It has everything you need. But if you can't fit it, you can drop down a bit. As for the boosters, I said the Hogire for the prior video probably, or the Judith. The Hogire is more of it's mathed out for the actual speedrun build that I'm using. But for most people, you'll pro or also for just what the uh, what the uh, 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 what the other guy was going for. But for here, the Judith is you want to fly, but you aren't going fast. The l the uh, l uh, uh, higher is a bit faster than that, but not as good for energy. The virtue is just straight, straight burst speed going forward. Uh, lies for overall high speed. S the, these four are recommended from the armored core Discord for PvP purposes. I do typically mess around with some other ones like the Ekhazer for f uh, of like higher speed, uh, speed moving in the air. But for just just learning the game, I would stick with what the Armored Core Discord would say for those. I kind of math stuff out. You're not going to need that. But but though this does give you a bit of a better option, which is why say why why I'm adding it in there. For the most part, back booster is for. Are you going to backpedal? If so, use the uh, the uh, Lia back booster. If you if you say if you aren't the Latona back booster weighs on weighs a lot less has a lot lower energy cost. For side, the the Judith is for a very lightweight one that doesn't use too too much. The Shedder is actually very strong and is basically basically just the next part up. The uh the uh uh, uh the is also okay. The the higher is okay, but the Holo Furnace from the actual quick boost duration costs a lot, but it's just I want to get the hell out, or for a much heavier mech, it does also help you get so you get for out of the way. For the overboosters, so PvP you don't overboost a lot, so they typically just go the if you aren't using assault armor, the KB Judith, because the costs are low. Otherwise, for range, the Regal, or just Argaros or just a few of these other ones for the assault armor. I'm not sure what they use for the PvP purpose of just normal overboosting because they don't use it besides like really missile jousting. I don't really see much of use for it in PvP. Which is why I basically use just the first one on the list. It's good to use it. Now, for the actual weapons, one of the other things that people asked was how stuff translates to using weapons and lock distance. Because there are people who try stuff and say they can't hit things. So just to go over arms, the since we hear the aim precision also very much affects your your ability to hit using weapons for your arms because you will note there is a shot precision stat on weapons, which typically doesn't actually change that much for a lot of these higher end ones until you get to the heavier ones or shotguns. But I said, for the most part, a lot of them, the shot precision is pretty high. So what the accuracy mostly comes down to, instead of the actual weapon, is really your arms. Besides that, the farther range that your arms have, sorry, the farther range that, that your guns have, the higher shot uh, precision that you want. The closer they are also matters, because you can use the l higher or something for close range shotgun machine gun. Because the aim precision doesn't matter, but though if you're using also because they they've got spread anyway, but for snipers or like other things, you typically want a higher aim precision, which is why for really typically for guns the forty the uh, the zero forty seven is great for sh just using shell weapons, the zero sixty three is great for energy weapons if you're going heavy, the the sorry. Okay, so the Hilbert for heavy energy weapons are actually quite nice. As well as if you're just being very close up and very vertical, 
The Ekhazer arms have a heavy boost to the maneuverability for aiming up and down. The arms hold guns sideways, I probably mentioned that prior. Good for just constantly going over or under people in the air when you're trying to shoot them while also trying, trying to dodge. As for, as for your actual weapon kit, you very often want either the weapons for your arms paired and the backs paired, or you've got the arm paired with the opposite back. And a very common thing to look at is mostly, do you want to shred PA and have your damage focused around them not having primal armor, like using rifles, machine guns, a lot of shell weapons, or energy weapons in this game typically ignore primal armor and just deal damage, which is what the PA a uh, penetration forces as well as the rifles also typically go through PA very well uh, instead of the let's say the sorry the um, um, machine guns or shotguns don't have a lot of penetration but from the actual damage or not damage okay so for, okay so sorry from the actual fire rate take out a lot of it very quick and then you're just dealing straight through the actual primal armor Again, if you're using a long-range sniper, don't really need to peel peel the PA. A lot of the rifles also don't necessarily have to peel it, but if you can, you start dealing a lot more damage. Something else is missiles are really good at taking PA out, especially if you've got like scatters or other things. As you can see, they typically have a very uniform penetration. They don't necessarily care, but if you hit them when it's out, it does a lot more. But then you can use things like scatter missiles of any of these kinds. You're firing like 16 at them, just immediately chunks out a large chunk. And then you can start dealing damage, try to keep pressure up so it can't really come back up. So let's say we want these here for fighting something in the air. Missiles are also typically like scatter missiles are good for something in the air. Not going to go past every single weapon because this was just a, a generalized build guide. I'll also go over it now. Other thing people saying about not being able to hit. Besides that you need. Uh, let's just quickly set this up with random crap. So no we're going to have the the. Judith FCS, the lock distance is supposed to be 790. But because missiles are here, we can increase that, increase the head here. Increase the aim precision, which also with these arms gets to basically 99. Very nice. Increase the lock speed. Honestly, you don't even need this lock speed up. You can just go for that missile lock speed. Not going to bother with the rest of actual tuning because that's more personal preference. Also, something I didn't, I believe I didn't go over prior is stabilizers. So how this works is that it is basically an inverse that the, that the higher, sorry, that the, okay, so the difference between the front and rear or the, or the, or the, or the left and the right is basically an inverse bonus to speed. So if your back is a lot higher than your front, so let's say we do this, the back is now 228 higher. This, this gives you a bonus speed to going forward, but then reduces your speed coming back. So three ways you can re so the so there's basically three real ways to set this up and one other way that you can get a major boost out of it if you're someone who can pull it off but is not advised in PvP which I'll go over is you can just increase your back while keeping the left sorry left and the uh, and you'll, um, sorry, and you like right even which is the rear core sorry core for both spots as well as the back. Now tanks lose all of their leg spots to stabilize, but quads actually gain more. Quads have spots for each leg and there's several extra on there to increase the rear farther to get even more extra speed. 
a second way of basically doing this is to oh also it's not always even here the different weapons on your spots change how your weight's balanced around so you don't always use the same ones if you want left and right even you can use ones like like these that only increase the side to try to even it out to still get full power out of the back a different option is just basically maxing the front out to help you back pedal to shoot while basically running away using a strong back booster um, another option is just keeping it entirely even so you're final fine all around or something else you can do is just go all in on one side make sure you're only going a single way for that max speed which will also increase the opposite ways quick turn like actual angle a lot to help you just get ridiculous turns out of it but except for doing that in pvp is frowned upon because the net code is so bad it'll cause a desync and basically mess up the hitting you don't want it to circle in just a single direction something else of note is you can just use the judith main booster and then something for the side that's strong and just use it to permanently fly except when you actually want to move only move sideways and still move very fast without actually having to move slow because this judith fcs is on so just to jump in now, the lock-on was 790. You will note, I can lock on past 790 with this head. Because of the head, now opposed to 790, it's locking on at almost 1100. Which for the which for these rifles, doesn't matter. If anything that's moving is not going to hit you too far. Except actual missiles, you will note that the red triangle's there. Which means... I can still hit something from that far using, basically using the actual missiles. Missiles also take, so you take your speed that you're moving when you fire. So if, so, so you can quick boost forward and actually increase the benefit there. If I hold it down, quick boost forward and fire, it speeds them up. Notice it's now flying. These are really good for chasing people in the air. And then just when they land, they'll all just smack them pretty hit. Now there's different scatters that work better. I just grabbed a completely random pair. Now, for actually hitting using uh, using rifles, you will note that the lock circle is currently white. That's basically saying that you're out sorry, out of the optimal like max range, but you still kind of want to be a bit closer. So, like here, it's not going to hit most much because it's white. You're closer up; that's where it really wants to be. But even closer up, it hits. It, it just it just hits better. Notice because of the booster setup and the rate, I can basically stay in the air always except my forward speeds not that fast it's like uh, 1100 but but you can instead just move sideways to travel around you can just run away to get energy and be much faster without actually costing the energy to move again different preferences for different people and now and now, as i was saying prior for honestly weapons like this, you now have, let's say you're using a sniper for your left arm. Sorry, this is the, uh, the, this is the right arm. Obviously you don't want to really be using a sniper and a, a like rifle for at the same time, just for purposes of the range, the melee ability, it's not going to work well. So, it, so then instead we can have something else for the opposite. Like again, we can have missiles. We could have a sniper cannon. A grenade depends on really where, like, like where you want to be. Even also note that the melee ability on these is pretty bad, so it also doesn't help close up. Except you can manually move or turn the center of your screen to help lock on with those. Yeah, opposed to using an actual rifle, let's say we change the left back with a sniper cannon instead. Note the the recoil here is probably too much for on these legs. I will get stunned, so let's increase the legs. Again, you can math out with using tuning where exactly you want to be, but this is probably fine for this. Also, both of these are not things that need PA to be peeled. 
Like you can see see that there is the white the white actual targeter there. That's what I was talking about prior, where like you'll lose lock on. Except that you there because also cannons on your back have a certain vertical height. Like like up and then down uh, the at the can aim. The reason this is here is that the actual cannon can't aim all the way down far enough. That is a different thing for cannons that, that in which arms can fully go up and down. So anyone using back cannons, that is another way just getting straight above them so they can't shoot it at you or going or or like going under them. And and you, so, and you can currently notice also that the that every time that you know, it's like I say I basically boost or they boost that the white the white uh, to targeting marker pops back up and starts going towards them you can help move the camera to get it on them wait for the lock on afterwards don't instantly fire and then just shoot which is helpful but it's just even even these fairly close up as long as you're doing it right also note that the that the uh, sniper cannon when it's fired the right arm unlocks a bit maybe due due to the uh, uh, stability or that person trying to dodge it that's really what you've got to do make sure that you know know what your actual lock on is help out with the builds basically especially offline almost anything works it's just it's just having a proper pairing for your pairing for the actual weapons. Let's say we want to change this to something that benefits from basically peeling primal armor off without actually having to uh, just go full in on the primal armor. So VTFs are very nice. They blow up near target. Change to uh, the body of rifles. So now these by themselves won't necessarily peel primal armor fast, but they can. But now I have these that I can fire. Going to be pretty accurate. I fire those from a bit too far. Also, firing missiles faster doesn't always help because it does also slightly mess up the tracking on them, the faster they're going, the worse the tracking. But the, except the, it also has to do with distance, because they have a lot better tracking the less time that they've been flying. It's a bit weird. So there we go. Let's see if I can get them off here. Of course, this isn't working at all currently. What else is new? Okay, they, okay so... There we go, the primal armor's off. It's now doing a lot of damage faster, but though he's got very decent uh, very decent uh, AP output. So you'll see that even with that, I have to really keep on him to keep it down. And now it's hitting about 700 prior with it off. Now it's hitting about three to 400 a hit with his primal armor on. And now this is where we can get to something else. As I showed, I believe for the, uh, believe for the actual prior video. See, instead we do a motor cobra. And I mean, even this is still going to be fine. Let's try a closer, a closer range assault rifle that fires faster. So the entire point of the missiles here, something else that you can do, well, that crashed. So let me go with this back up. So I was saying, so something else that you can do, especially if you're, if you're doing PVP or certain missions is that you can have a, a like loadout that starts overweight for the purpose of having a few options and then dropping something at the start when you won't need it because you know what this mission has or just something else. Like, I could entirely have a tank that has snipers in the arms and then something closer range like motor cobras in inside the hangars with the entire point of if I start and I don't need the snipers for that mission, I can, I can, like, I can drop it. Let's say I have a, 
a midweight that has a, a like a missile launcher for the back right, a grenade for the back left, maybe flares. If I know I don't need those flares or just one of those on there, you can drop it. Or let's say you, you basically just want an opening shot using what you have, but don't want to keep it for once you start. So because this is going to be a more close range one, let's use a Nalaya booster. Not going backwards, so Latona. Let's go with Shedder because I don't need the energy drain from that other one. This is fine. Now this is obviously probably should be going with this one to be honest. The fire rate's basically a single one higher, but all the stats are a lot better, especially the damage. This is just has a lot of ammo. And use the motor cobra. Now, just to point out the other thing, we're gonna go with a big Sue and a bismuth on here, which, as you can see, don't fit. But I'm not going to be changing the weight there. Your ability, aim precision. Oh wait. Going to quickly remove these to math out the weight. Okay, I, I am actually fine. I'm gonna put the big Sue back on. And sure, we can, we can put these on too. So now in theory, the build looks like it shouldn't work. Now I want full main speed again because I'm going based off of without having the 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 uh, much larger stuff on. I'm kind of doing this part a bit based off of what I feel it should be because the actual motor cobra for the left arm is heavier. So let's go into free play, an order match. Let's grab no bless oblige. Why not? So, as I was saying, the entire point of having these backs, because I know this is an AC fight, is I'm going to fire them at the start and then just instantly drop them. You know, I forgot the head. So, I should have used the other head, especially because the extra lock-on range would be very nice, but I'm not going to go back for it now. And this is just an actual demonstration. The other one will, as I said, make it work a lot better. Here we have this. I have the lock on there. And then just immediately dropping all of these. Now he's hit, the primal arm is down, and we can just use this to quickly chip at him. Notice you want to be fairly closer because of the actual weapon choice, and then they just die. Now, now we can also do it without having the uh, sorry uh, without having the extra opening salvo because I will admit it's a bit cheesy. Like even still, the goal is using basically using the left arm to try to peel his primal armor off while the lock on range says that that uh, the re hundred's good. You kind of want to be a bit closer than that because you want to make sure that most of your shots hit. Also, this is probably not the best FCS for it either, but the actual missiles for the opening, it helps with that. Like, note that once the primal armor is down, it starts doing a lot more, like, a lot more damage faster. And now let's just quickly show one with, with being a bit too, like, too far out. The other issue is that I believe it only tells you when your farthest range weapon is locked on. There are are some indicators to show which one's locked on and which one isn't. Like, okay, so like note here that, sorry, that the center ring is red and the right uh, parenthesis is red because the assault rifles is within range, but the left uh, parenthesis is still white. And this is inside of just the actual wider ones, because this is showing that the left arm is not within range. But so even even if we are here, note like most of these are missing because we're too far. 
different weapons have got different lock ranges that you really kind of want to be in. Now if we get a bit closer, once it actually reloads, you'll note that it does a lot, a lot more damage faster because it's actually hitting. The lock range isn't necessarily the optimal range. I know I'm just basically uh, repeating myself now. That's just the main question that I've been asked constantly. Now, for the other part, what if I want to ignore the fact that there's primal armor there and fight without it anyway? You can do. You can chip by 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 using uh, using a, 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 a snipers and back pedaling really high high bullet uh, velocity on those you can use a just brute upfront damage bazooka bazookas work let's quickly make a bazooka build just to show that those kind of don't necessarily need the primal but something that that you will need on these the recoil is very high, the weapons are heavy. What you're going to want is a lot of firing stability. But also aim precision. Because you still really want, because you basically still want to hit with them. So all in all, the Hilberts are quite nice. The maneuverability is high, but also has the firing stability you're kind of going to want. Also seems to have the same maneuverability as the 047 and so take that with a grain of salt. Notice these these legs, while being quite nice for load, have very bad turning ability, which is kind of a penalty on them, but the Hilberts are again quite nice. Just because of what we're doing, gonna throw on an in blue, not really gonna pay too much attention to exactly what I'm putting the points into. This is more of a demonstration than just optimizing it. Now, something of note for these also is that you don't want to fire both of them at the sorry, at the same time, and it does also stun. So if you can combo it together, you can do quite a. You can basically guarantee that if that sorry, if that first one hits, the second one will not be dodged. You also don't just like want to hold it down. You kind of want to time it for like when they try to quick boost. But, but you can also just get close and just hammer them. If you do manage to break PA like you saw at the end, does do a lot of damage. You don't necessarily have to, but now for the purpose of just not including PA at all, laser rifles are very good at that. The PA attenuation basically doesn't exist. So you can just find one that you kind of want to use to just pelt people with it. Let's say you have a right arm of this. Range, that's fine. Let's use the lightweight sniper. A lot of ammo, decent fire rate. Gonna, because this is a laser one, we're gonna use the 063 for that energy weapon skill. And obviously not going to use the in blue for weapons at this range. Because we don't have missiles. The FS the higher at this case will be fine. Because the parallel processing is nice. The lock speed is nice. The distance is fine. And, and this head will augment the range anyway. So it's really just, you don't really want to pair weapons that don't get like the same kind of like actual combat style from it. Now, okay, so just like entirely 100% weapons that can penetrate PA or that really heavily benefit from it will kill things faster. This is still very, very consistent. Now let's say you kind of want to sort of hybrid stuff for that. Let's say you want this 
this this uh, laser rifle there, X, if you still want a at least closer medium range uh, range uh, um, uh, range weapon in case they actually like gain on you. We have a Labadia left arm, means the right back. We're going to want some kind of decent tracking missile. Or just something else that works at close range. Let's say a Sapla. And then for the left back to combo with this with this laser rifle, we could do a sniper cannon because we have decent heavy legs. Could do a laser cannon. Uh, in this case, let's do the lightweight sniper cannon because again, the melee ability on this is quite nice. So just when it's far, we can use these. Probably a very poor, poor combo. You can mask stuff out better probably than what I just did by just randomly throwing things on. Now let's say it's someone like him who is not a threat at close range. We can just easily, quickly just pop up on him. And just quickly take him out. I mean, so that's really what I had here. People didn't really have a specific question about certain weapons or other stuff. It was really just combat ranges. So I just tried to throw in a bunch here. If, if there's anyone who has a specific question about certain weapons or anything, please ask in comments. Ask me when I'm streaming on Twitch, anything. I will make a video for it, like, like here. I don't mind. Just... Please let me know. Hope you guys. Uh, so honestly, I really hope that this helps out somebody, helps you guys out. Also, I didn't mention it much, but this Sapla has a very low recoil compared to all of the other grenades. So lots of just regular lightweight medium legs can still use it without getting stunned. So that's it. Thanks everyone, and have a great day.